Hello, I'm right in the middle of doing a getting started making music guide for your Surface Pro 4 and I ran into a bit of a problem with the ASIO for All driver. So I thought I'd do this very quick video just showing how I got through the problem, what you need to do, how you need to deal with it and how it's all wonderful once you do, I suppose. Anyway, so a little while ago I sent you off to download the ASIO for All driver so that we can get better performance out of the audio drivers in the Surface Pro 4. Now what you would expect when you install the ASIO for All driver is lower latency and better performance. And what I've actually got is this. So as you can hear and see, hopefully, terrible latency, or at least latency that's no better than it was without the ASIO for All driver, and this horrible crackle which we didn't have before at all. So what the heck's going on? Well, we had to dig a little bit deeper into the settings to find out what this little bugger was doing. I've started up Reactor, which has got a good sort of simple interface when it comes to the audio engine and will let us know and show us what's going on, hopefully. So there's our synth. Let me just show you how it's uh, connected together. So here you've got the audio MIDI settings. You've got the ASIO for all driver loaded there. I can go to the routing and show you that it's set to the second output, which is the output for the headphones, which is there, which is what it should be. Then if we click on this button here, the ASIO config, it will bring up the ASIO for all control panel. So in here, the ASIO for all driver has wrapped up the Realtek drivers. The Realtek is the onboard sound and you've got audio output and you've got audio second output. First one is the speakers, second one, is the headphone output. Now we have to look behind this plus button to see what's going on. So I'm connected to the second output with the headphone output at the moment and that has a number of things under here. The first one says out 2 times 44.1 to 48 kilohertz. Second one says out 2 times 8 to 192 kilohertz. Now 192 kilohertz is a huge sample rate, the sort of thing used in crazy bonkers high definition audio. So maybe that has something to do with it. So if we change it to the 44.1, like so, the latency has gone, it's back to what it should be. It sounds more like, the 128 samples that it should be because that's what the buffer size is set to. So whatever it is that 8 to 192 kilohertz setting is, that part of the audio driver that ASIO for All has somehow extracted is not what we're after. It's no good. It seems to add latency, presumably to allow the CPU time to process audio with that kind of sample rate. Still got a crackle though. To get rid of the crackle, what you have to do is disable the driver you're not using. So we're using the headphones, so you need to disable the other one, because for some reason it can't cope with having both active at the same time, which I suppose makes some kind of sense. So let's go back up to the other one, up here, and uncheck it, check it. Now at that point, Reactor crashes, because, well, we're messing around with its audio engine, so I'm not at all surprised. So we have to close out of that and get Reactor working again. Okay, no sounds. Let's go into our audio settings. It's still on ASIO for all. The routing is now no longer connected. So if we route it to the second output, that now set to the second output. There's our audio with no crackle. That is what it should have been. That is what it should have been. Now I understand why Microsoft decided to give it two separate drivers or two separate endpoints if you like, is because the experience you have through headphones and the experience you have through speakers is very different and it needs to be processed differently. You know, that's all fair enough. However, for us, doing this is a complete pain in the ass. And ASIO for all, rather than being its usual helpful self, because it pulls out all of the options and different 
weirdness within the driver, it actually makes itself incredibly and stupidly complex. However, once you've set it up, once you've got it working, it should just stay like that. So if I close reactor, reopen it, Awesome. Will it swap the speakers for me? Of course not. But <laughs> let's go to bring up the control panel. If I turn that one back on and that one off, change the routine back to one, set it, make sure it's set to 44.1. <laughs> then there's my speakers. See, that was easy. There's no trouble there at all. Piece of cake. And to set it back to this fella again, let's plug that in. Let's turn that off, turn that on. Let's turn that on, turn that off. Oh, now we're coming together. So to summarize then, ASIO for all is a bit of a bugger. The audio drivers in the Surface Pro 4 are a bit of a bugger. So we're kind of in this stupid screwy situation. However, once you've got the ASIO Fuel drivers loaded, the latency is playable and far, far better than using the Windows drivers by themselves. So is it worth the struggle? Yeah, of course it is, because this is what we want. We can't be dealing with unplayable latency. That's just ridiculous. So you just have to get to grips with the ASIO for all control panel and make sure your routing is right, that you're routing to the output that you're using, that you've got that one and only that one selected and that it's set to 44.1. Of course, the best solution is to get yourself a bleeding USB audio interface with proper ASIO drivers. You can plug that in the side and then have nice low latency and lovely sound without having to deal with the onboard drivers. But there you go, so that was a quick look at ASIO for all. Now I think we can move on.